Splatoon 3 does a lot of things great. The quality of life improvements are easy to notice and increase the value of the game. Splatoon 3 improved the waiting system by letting you fight dummies in the lobby and run around with your friends. The added pool system lessens the need for friend codes and lets players get together faster than ever. The replay code system lets everyone have access to the tools they need to improve in Splatoon instead of just those who have capture cards. But there are still so many ways Splatoon 3 could become a better game. Before I get into this, I want to make it clear I won't be talking about things that many other people already talk about. Let's see what else can be changed. Number one, let's fix sea snail mechanics. Currently, the only way to get super sea snails in Splatoon 3 is by playing in Splatfests. Super sea snails not only let you level up your gear quicker and easier than using cash, but they also let you re-roll slots and get a few extra chunks along the way. If you want to level up that gear beyond two stars, you need to spend a lot of super sea snails, or alternatively, a lot of money. After Splatfests are done, there's no way a newer player could get sea snails. So I propose two different ways to obtain more sea snails. In Splatoon 2, you'd get a sea snail for every level up beyond level 30. What do we have in this game as a level up reward? Sheldon licenses. So let's give the players the ability to trade in their Sheldon licenses for extra sea snails from Sheldon only if you own everything currently in Ammo Knights. What, you really think he's just gonna let you trade those in when you haven't got everything in the shop? Come on. <laughs> This will become less efficient over time anyway, given that level ups in this game go far beyond level 100 and the EXP required to level up gets higher and higher, so it's not too busted to let people get some this way. Also, um, some players have a lot of licenses sitting around collecting dust. I definitely wouldn't know anyone like that, no. <laughs> But what about players who want to get extra slots on their gear, but don't play a ton of ranked or turf war? Like players who enjoy mostly salmon run? What if Marigold also had a suspiciously large number of sea snails available? <laughs> Playing a lot of salmon run nets you a ton of drink tickets. What if you could trade in one of every drink ticket for an extra snail? I'm sure some players would take that offer, especially if they don't use the tickets anyway. Number 2. Splatoon 2's spectator mode was better in some ways. Splatoon 2's spectator mode let you view how many splats a player had gotten, plus the number of times they used their special. For some reason, this information is absent in Splatoon 3's spectator mode. On top of that, without holding down the button to switch players, you can't even see players' names while spectating a match. It feels like you should know who you're watching at all times, but Splatoon 3 chose to not make this information constantly visible. Adding these things back would make spectator mode, well, spectator friendly. <laughs> Number 3. Let's make more in-depth ability information more available to the player. Not every ability needs to have a more detailed description like swim speed up for example. But abilities such as sub power-up and special power-up would benefit from having additional details appear based on what weapon you're using. A player who doesn't look up Splatoon information online would have no clue from the description provided that it also provides a respawn punisher type effect once the opponent is splatted. I mean hey, there's enough space to add numerical information too for the stackable abilities. Imagine being able to see special loss reduced 20% or special gain gained. 15% or like swim speed increased 5% it would open up experimentation and planning so much more to the average player if you want this kind of information now though sendo has a wonderful calculator on his website that does exactly this I i've linked it in the description if you want it okay okay number four is a quick one let's put the experience counters back on gear w why did they remove that it was there in splatoon 2 and did no harm I know I would purposely pick gear that was close to leveling up pretty often if I only had time for a couple of matches. You can still see this information, but not on your gear selector screen. You have to open up your status menu to find it. So to see how much points a bunch of gear has at once, you'd have to change what you're equipping to take a look without having to go into a match. Oops. While we're talking UI, let's make weapon UI better and more informative. Put paint point amounts back on the weapons. Please. In Splatoon 2, this let you see exactly how close you were to hitting a special milestone. Wee! Splatoon 3 uses a freshness meter to show you how much and how well you play a weapon. 
but in my opinion it doesn't compare to the feeling of finally hitting a million points worth of paint on a weapon you love to use. This information is also still being recorded, but it's only available right now on the NSO app. Sounds like it could be imported at any time. A different way to reward players who play at a higher level could be an optional toggle to see what weapons you've played well in X-Rank. Imagine being able to know what your best score is for a particular weapon. Seeing as associated weapons are logged alongside your best X power in the NSO app, this is another piece of data we could see being used. Number six, let's add a recon tentacle color selector. Splatoon 3 puts a huge focus on being able to take photos of your Inkling or Octoling to look fresher than ever. For those unfamiliar with recon mode, you can get to select the map and mode you're playing on. When you enter in recon mode, your character's tentacles will change to one of the colors available during a match. However, this color is random and you can only have the colors exclusive to the alpha team. When you're done with recon mode, you'll still keep that ink color perfect for taking photos or posting in the plaza. I know people who will cycle through multiple games in recon mode just to get the shade they want for a picture or a video. Hi, I I'm People, and if you subscribe it makes the time I spend doing that even more worth it, so thanks! But I wouldn't mind saving that time if just a little menu popped up letting me pick my color right away instead. Please? Number seven, let's add more badges for more accomplishments in this game. Specifically, sub-weapon badges and splat or assist badges. <laughs> Small UI stylized images of the sub-weapons already exist, as we can see and use them in the equip menu to sort through the weapons we want to use. All the development team would have to do is add the alternate silver and gold color schemes and bang, badges. They already do this with special weapons in the exact same way, so what stops them from doing it with sub-weapons? It's clear the development team knows some people choose weapons based on what sub they have, otherwise it wouldn't be a sorting option, right? And with the splat and assist badges, splat badges would instill just a bit of extra pride in people who take being aggro in-game to the next level. It's also just fun to be rewarded for playing the game well. These two types of badges would probably be best if they're based on totals and not reaching a certain number of average splats or assists per game, simply so anyone who plays the game enough could still get them. And the assist badges? Uh, they would just be funny. <laughs> Some players take great pride in being very helpful, whether it's throwing bombs in the right place, or spamming point sensors till the cows come home. I mean, hey, if I could run around with my opening gambit Splattershot Nova and have a golden assist badge, I think players would take me a bit more seriously when the match opens up. Number eight, let's make pools better. Allow players to see what pool their friends are in, only if they're online, right in the notification section. This could be a list you could click on to open up in full so it doesn't change up the menu too much if you're not interested. But even without it, there's so much open space like right now. Even something as simple as adding notifications so you know what pool your friends are joining could be a huge help. Currently, the way you know what pool your friends are in is by word of mouth. But this isn't efficient when you're trying to find new communities. Knowing what your friends are up to would be a huge help. Also, random extra pool fact, did you know there's an option to turn off notifications when you don't want to send them? But not one to turn them off when you don't want to get them? <laughs> That's what happens when you only have an options menu with just three on-off switches. Number nine, let us travel faster to table turf. I get that there's no space, but we could just make everything else a little bit smaller. And I know, thinking about doing that probably does not make you happy when you look at how the menu looks right now. So why not just let us mouse on over to the right hand side and be able to click on any of the locations shown on the mini-map there. Merch, the table turf, the recon menu, and the post box could all be additionally added to the menu this way without having anything change. I mean, look at the menu right now. Why, why is the train station part of the menu not even in the regular menu? I, I get that it's DLC, but <laughs> Speaking of plaza posts, maybe we should be able to look at them in a way that doesn't require us to walk around the plaza. Whether it's on the Nintendo Switch Online app as an exclusive function, or in an additional tabbed menu, or maybe even a little screen right next to the plaza post box, I'm sure people would love the ability to mass scroll and mass brush their favorite posts without wondering if they're actually like in the plaza. Worried it would take away the special feeling of seeing plaza posts for the first time while walking around? 
Maybe the list by the side of the board could exclude what's already being shown by Inklings and Octolings. Or maybe it could be used to show you plaza posts from other regions that aren't your own to increase your exposure to other posts and also help other people get noticed. That'd be good. I know I wouldn't mind seeing even more posts out there. The little things add up, and I hope you've been able to see that through this video. What other smaller things do you think would change this game for the better? Maybe you'll also start noticing some of the things I've talked about now that your ears have been opened up to these ideas. If so, uh, oops. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good one.